Hi everyone, I've been really busy over October and November, so I didn't really get a lot of time to read, and much less have time to actually make a video about what I've been reading. So I decided that I would combine October and November into one video, and here it is. So this is Monthly Reads 2 months review video, so I hope you enjoy. So the first book that I read in October was Rebecca. Described as one of the greatest psychological thrillers ever written, I decided to reread Rebecca as the Netflix film adaption was coming out. And with all the many different adaptions that there have been, it's hard to remember what actually happens in the original version, considering they make lots of changes over the years. I don't normally read books like this. What am I saying? I have loads of books like this and read a variety of different novels all the time. But I was drawn to read Rebecca because of the musical version. I am a huge fan of musical theatre and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the first time and I feel like it really did improve on a second read. I was able to understand the characters in different ways because I myself have matured from the last time I read it, so, you know, even though this book was written in the 1930s, the themes and ideas expressed throughout the book really have allowed it to age very well, so, you know, in that respect it's good. Each character creates the suspense in the novel in their own unique way. What I was trying to say here is that each of the characters plays their own part in this story and the events that happen are unexpected due to that and this pushes you towards the uncomfortable conclusion at the end of the novel. Overall this novel deserves all the praise it's got over the years. It definitely is a very enduring story that I feel a lot of people connect with and you know, the many adaptions that there have been of it speak for its endurance. So yeah, definitely a book that leaves you feeling, it, it gives you a bit of a creepy feeling, but it's a good read. So yeah, read this. Okay, so it's October, it's Halloween. I read Rebecca. So yeah, psychological thriller, gothic things. I just had to continue it, didn't I, and read Frankenstein. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I actually first read this for the first time, and like a lot of people, when I started to read it, it really wasn't what I expected, because with all the different gothic horror movies and series over the years that portrayed Frankenstein and his monster in their own way, that are completely different to the book, then it really does change your opinion. If you've watched any of my other monthly read videos, you'll know that I previously read The Major Works Byron and I'm a huge fan of Byron. And of course, Shelley was a part of his group of friends and it was supposedly at his villa that she actually began to write Frankenstein with a little bit of help from him. So, you know, it's, it's that style that I really enjoy. It's quite a unusually paced novel. It's collections of letters, and then the rest of the book is told from Frankenstein telling his story. But he doesn't really focus a lot on his creating the monster, which is not something you would expect after seeing all the other versions of Frankenstein. You'd think it was like, all him creating the monster. And it isn't really, it's about the responsibility that he has to take for the monster after he has created it. And it creates this wonderful story about morals and sort of where science is going and whether humans should just meddle for the sake of meddle or whether they need to actually take responsibility for their meddling. So, you know, in that respect, it's a really exciting novel to read, but it isn't for everybody. It's writing is quite old fashioned and it can get bogged down on things that some people might not enjoy. But 
If you do like classic literature, then this is a must read and definitely something that I think should really be on everybody's Halloween reading list if they like classic stuff. So yeah, definitely a good one. And it's quite short as well, so it doesn't take a long time to read. I sort of started reading it and then had loads of things happening so I had to put it down again so I kind of got a little bit forgetful at where I was and I was like oh what's happening now oh yeah and then carried on at quite a pace with it so yeah really great short read for anybody I have this beautiful little copy which is a Barnes and Noble Leatherman classic edition fantasy books and I have read lots of different series as you will know from my monthly reads videos and for future monthly reads videos because I don't plan to start reading fantasy anytime soon so with that in mind I had to read this at some point and um, so I got this for my birthday which was back in September and of course with reading other things I have only just got around to it this month one of my favourite things about fantasy is world building and that's exactly what this is. It, it's just a world building companion for Game of Thrones. If you've read Game of Thrones then you kind of need to read this. I mean it's not that majorly important but if you really enjoy the world of Game of Thrones then definitely read this. I know George R. R. Martin isn't known as being one of the world's best world builders but in this is quite fun. It's blurred and betrayal and sometimes you just need a bit of that and you know, yes, you can guess if you know history quite well and you know Game of Thrones, what's gonna happen next? So I wouldn't say this is like, you know, the kind of books that you would read if you wanted to sort of keep having guesses and mysteries because you know the end game of it. But it is a great read and it is really fun, all the little intrigues and learning how certain people played a more important part than you initially thought. So for that it's really great. Unlike Game of Thrones this is written like a history book, although it does keep that typical pace that Martin does have, you know, so you're not going to get bogged down like you would if you were actually reading a history book, so that's quite a good thing. The only problem I did have with this book is it has a family tree in the back but I still got lost at who some of the characters were and I was just like oh who are you I know this person are you related to them or are you on their side or their side and it, because they some of the Targaryens have very similar names and that just got a little bit confusing sometimes but it doesn't really spoil from reading the book you just carry on and then suddenly it clicks oh that's who they are <laughs> but um other than that I really enjoyed it definitely a must for Game of Thrones fans and also this edition is illustrated and has some very lovely illustrations in it so yeah definitely read this. one thing if you don't like cliffhangers don't read this because we have no idea when volume 2 is going to come out Martin has said that he needs to finish A Song of Ice and Fire first before he can release volume 2 of this so it's kind of like okay so we're, we're gonna wait a while for this one so yeah part of me is like should I have waited? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll just sit with a cliffhanger as I do with a lot of fantasy novels that I haven't finished reading yet so these were all the books i read and quite frankly i really enjoyed all of them it was you know fun to read these books over the last two months and i will hopefully be back up to my normal speed of reading now that christmas is coming and the new year and everything so yeah if you enjoyed these books as well then please let me know in the comments and as always please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye